After two long years, Pixar is back where they belong, on the big screen. Today on Mark's Movie Reviews, we're watching Lightyear. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Your old pal Mark Cap is here with another installment of Mark's Movie Reviews. I was thinking about this on the drive into the theater. The last Pixar movie that I saw in the theater would have been Toy Story 4 way back in 2019. Onward was only out for around two weeks before they started closing movie theaters because of COVID-19. And then Soul, Luca, and Turning Red all went straight to Disney+. Plus. But we are finally back in the theater to watch that hopping desk lamp take us on another animated adventure. Now, I know Lightyear has been a bit of a tough sell. When they first announced it, they were like, it's the story of the real Buzz Lightyear, to which people went, what? It's like this. I grew up in an era where pretty much every toy had a media franchise to help promote it. It had a Saturday morning cartoon. It had comic books. And if you were really lucky, it also had a movie. The creators of Toy Story always envisioned that Buzz Lightyear had a similar media franchise backing him. So those Pixar animators finally asked, what was the Buzz Lightyear movie? What was it about? And here it is. They say this is the movie that made Andy want a Buzz Lightyear action figure. Does it make me want one? <laughs> A ship is traveling through space with its crew in hypersleep. When life is detected on a passing planet, the space rangers are awakened to investigate. When the native flora and fauna turn out to be hostile, they try to escape, but space ranger Buzz Lightyear screws up the takeoff, and now they are hopelessly stranded. A year later, Buzz is ready to conduct the first test flight to see if their ship is fixed. The ship is not fixed, but there's a side effect. Thanks to time dilation, every time Buzz conducts a test flight, he winds up four years in the future. After several more test flights, Buzz winds up 80 years in the future. He discovers that, during his last test flight, their makeshift colony had been conquered by a warlord named Zerg. Now with his ragtag team of rookies, including the granddaughter of his former partner, it's up to Buzz Lightyear to stop Zerg, save the colony, and get these people home. But the question remains, will Buzz ever be able to forgive himself for botching their takeoff in the first place? It's Pixar, so you know the animation is amazing. I almost wish I saw it in IMAX, because Pixar's technological breakthrough on this film, they studied IMAX cameras to figure out how to recreate that IMAX feeling in animation, so the entire thing's optimized for IMAX. The voice acting is great. Chris Evans puts his own spin on Buzz Lightyear. It's kind of like a Captain America that's loosened up a little bit. It's got a pretty nice twist as to who the villain is. And it's not just Buzz, but his sidekick Hawthorne has a nice little character arc as well. While the big plot twist was nice, I started thinking that was awfully familiar. And then it struck me. This has pretty much the same plot as The Lego Movie 2. I've been lamenting for some time now that I've seen so many of these animated films that I can see the big plot twist coming from a mile away. At the end of the day, it's just another good old-fashioned space adventure. It really doesn't break any new ground, but it's still a good time at the movies. On my patented nib scale, I'm giving it three nibs. Ooh. 